Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Double Indemnity, the podcast. The podcast. The podcast. My name is Emily Glazer. My name is Jonathan Pyle. This is our podcast where we talk about movies, and we kind of try to have serious conversations about them and talk about, you know, smart things that smart people like to talk smart about. Smart things. Yeah, smart Movie things. Movie buffs and cinephiles talk about. all smart people to talk about. Just getting situated real quick so that I, my microphone is like got a really short little cable on it. First off, just start the podcast. If you guys are listening to us on your favorite podcast platform, just so you know, you can watch us on YouTube too if you want, as well as just, you know, wherever you listen to your podcast. Yeah, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. Something else is if you guys want to make comments and leave your opinions on the movies we're going to talk about. You can go to our letterbox, which is di underscore podcast. Isn't that what it is? It'll be linked in the description of the video, and it's also on our audio boom. There every Monday, we're going to post the movie that we're reviewing next week, and then you can go and leave comments or reviews if you want. I think it'd be kind of cool if somebody wants to do that along with us, and maybe one day we'll have a comment or review that somebody wants us to talk about. So that, that would, would be, be cool. Crazy. That would be crazy. I don't think anybody's going to ever do that. We would like that if you if you did. We would really like that if you would do that. But just to preface, I do want to apologize for the fact that we did not post anything last week. So we took a week off because of Christmas. Merry Christmas. You too. Thank you. Just say happy holidays. Not everybody celebrates Christmas. True. Happy holidays. We took a little break for the holiday season because we want to go home and spend time with our families and the schedule just didn't work out and I didn't want us to overstress about it. But we are here this week with what movie, Jonathan? Today, I'm talking about the Banshees of Ed Sheeran, directed by Banshees of Ed Sheeran, Martin McDonough. Have you heard of Martin McDonough? Oh, Mark Dunham. I... <laughs> Who's that? Wait, why are you laughing? Martin McDonough. Who's Mike Dunham? Martin McDonough. Martin McDonough. Martin. Martin. <laughs> was I saying Martin? I thought I was Martin. saying Martin. Okay, Martin would be like a cool name, though. I wouldn't be surprised if someone had the name Martin. Martin. Martin Place. Oh, what about I mean. Marketplace. Have you heard of the director, Martin McDonough? Not until this. Oh, not until this? No. He did, Didn't he do the um, Bruges or In Bruges? In Bruges. Which we tried to watch In Bruges once because Jonathan loves In Bruges. This it's now, hilarious. This right now is, is just coming to my brain that we watched it and I could not finish it because I was bored. Yeah. But you loved it. Jonathan loves In Bruges. Maybe we should try it again now that I've more quiet dissed. And it's the reunion of Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell. For this movie and in Sheeran? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. That's cool. And they work well together. They're good actors. They do. They bounce off each other very well. Yeah, that's for sure. He also directed Seven Psychopaths and Three Three Billboards Across Ebbing, Missouri. Oh, he did Three Billboards. Okay. That is like a very popular movie, isn't it? I feel like everyone I love that that. movie. That was like an Oscar sweeping one. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. That movie is so funny. I just love the one line. What is it where he's like, there will be no like hose or something in our house? Oh, yeah, he goes, that's such a good rose. He goes, there will be no cunts in this house. And then the son goes, what are you, moving out? (laughs) That was such a genius line. I love that. It's good writing. Anyway, also, this continues Martin McDonough's streak of making a fictional town in the movie title. Because Ebbing, Missouri does not exist. And neither does Anna Sheeran. Oh, and in Sheeran doesn't exist. Nope. It's fictional. I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Um, Full disclosure, this will be a spoiler-filled review. Yes, I always forget to say that. There's so many spoilers. We're going to spoil all the things. All the spoils are spoiled. The summary of the movie, on a fictional island in Ireland, one man decides to end a lifelong relationship with his best friend. Things escalate when one man, Calm, says that every time Podrick, it wasn't Podrick, it was like... It was Podrick. It was Podrick, but they said in like the accent. accent. The accent would make it different. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. We are obviously butchering his name. Had a great name. We don't know how to say it. I'm gonna say Podrick. Podrick. Kind of yeah, like Game of Thrones Podrick. Yeah. Yes, Podrick. Pod. <laughs> that every time Podrick talks to him, he will cut off one of his fingers, which actually is not a spoiler because that was in the trailer. Yeah, that he said that that was in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Other things happened. And yeah, things escalate um, from there significantly. I would say. <laughs> Pretty significantly, yes. <laughs> uh, this movie stars Colin Farrell, Brendan Gleeson. Carrie Condon, and Barry Keegan, who always plays a really weird person. He plays it so well, though. So, like, the he most annoying He can play, like, person. a weirdo super well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's fantastic at it. I wonder if it's just, like, his personality, you know what I mean? I don't know. I don't know. He's, he plays it very well. He's a good actor. Yeah. I wonder what he's like in real life. Probably pretty nice, honestly. Before we get into all the nitty-gritty gritty t- titties, I... <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know. Nice. I don't know where that came from, you guys. I don't know where that came from. It was just trying to rhyme, and then I didn't realize what I was saying. <laughs> forgive me. Forgive me. Moving on. This movie takes place in Ireland, and I just wanted to talk about how much I love Ireland and how Ireland is fantastic. Oh, when you um, excuse me, studied abroad in Spain. I studied abroad in Spain. In fact, when I studied abroad in Spain, I went to Dublin, Ireland, with a dear friend of mine and this other girl. <laughs> <laughs> And we had the best time. It was literally one of my favorite trips that we went on. Ireland is a fantastic place, and I wish we could have gone for longer. So I really enjoyed that aspect of this movie, especially since they have the most beautiful accents. And I will say, have you ever been to Ireland? I want to say I have. Yes, I have. You yeah. have? Do you remember it? No, not at all. Were you young? Yes. Okay. Jonathan was born in London, so I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of the European places you went, that yeah. you can say that you've been to, was because you were a kid. That's for, that's very true because yeah. Like, yeah, all over. Did Europe. you guys travel Europe a lot when you were living there? Yeah, I went to France, um, Switzerland, I think the Czech Republic, and Ireland, and maybe Wales. Maybe not Wales. Who knows? I don't know any Wales. Do you? <laughs> I don't know any Wales either. <laughs> <laughs> Wish I could speak Wales. Uh, oh, look at you. Okay. Well, after that rant, I do want to say. That when we were in Ireland, one of the cool things that we did is we went to the Guinness Museum. Because, Jonathan, did you know Guinness originated in Ireland? I, I did know that. You, you did know that? Yeah, because I told him. About three times. It was fantastic. And Guinness is delicious. So I thought, why not? After all this talking, you know, we might be a little thirsty. Yeah. We're just a little thirsty. So maybe we could uh, have some uh, Guinness. <gasps> Do you hear there's a ball in there? Why is there a ball in there? They put a ball in there to make it fizz, like to make it foamy when you open it or something. Is that only Guinness? It best enjoyed just... poured into a glass. Um, it's like a Guinness thing. I don't know if other beers do it. What is the ball? Careful, made? Don't shake it too much. <laughs> the ball is just like a plastic ball, and there's something special about it that makes it like fizzier or like fancier. I don't remember. I went to the museum and I learned all the things, but I have some cute little, a cute little fun fact about Guinness later when we get into the trivia section. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But if you don't drink Guinness, Guinness is delicious. And we're going to drink some now. I had a chilled glass, but it's been sitting there for a hot minute, so it's probably not cold anymore. But I am going to pour my Guinness into my glass. And Jonathan is lame, and he doesn't have one, so he's just going to drink out of his can. Well, we only had one cool mug. Let's get that on the audio. Oh, yeah. Hear that? Yeah. <gasps> I told you not to shake it. Uh oh, it's exploding. <laughs> I will say I'm pretty sure that the ball does actually like make it easier or something. Like it makes it taste a lot better. I don't know. <laughs> okay, Jonathan, cheers. Cheers. Oh, wait, let me pour mine into my glass. Oh, yeah. Here, hold my tiny microphone. I'm not gonna pour the whole thing right now because I don't know if I could drink it all. But cheers. Cheers. The, the first time I had Guinness was at the Guinness Museum. Have you ever had it before? Yeah, I've had it before. You've had Guinness before? I didn't know yeah. that. Well, let's try. It. Mm, it's not very cold. <laughs> what do you think? It's all right. I've had it before, and I, I feel the same about it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I think it's good. It's smooth. It could be colder. I wish it was colder. Okay. Do you want to talk about the movie? Yes. So, Jonathan, for some reason, didn't have many talking points for this movie. At least that's what you mentioned to me earlier. That is partly true, but I had a lot for The Lighthouse. So. Yeah, which is just interesting because I really didn't have anything to say about The Lighthouse, and I have a lot more things to say about this movie. Hmm. So I really liked it. Maybe that says more about your intelligence. No, maybe it just says <laughs> I, means I don't have my head up my ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We both Swing. took a drink after that. A little suspicious. <laughs> it's not a drinking game, Jonathan. <laughs> okay. But yeah, with The Lighthouse, I just honestly didn't vibe with that movie. Whereas this movie, I really vibed with it. Really? I thought it was really good, yeah. So I have a lot of talking points. A lot of cute things that I noticed. Things that I quite enjoyed. Go for it. Okay. So the first thing I want to talk about is the way that they started the movie. Oh, wait. We didn't give our reviews. I give it four stars. I give it four as well. Maybe four and a half, actually. I give it four and a half stars. I give four. Fantastic. Okay, good. Moving on. Beyond that, I want to talk about how they started the movie. I thought it was genius the way they started the movie. It was like the overhead shot of the fields and the, and the music? No. I think the scene where he is walking to his doom and there's a fucking rainbow behind him and he's smiling and he um... seems happy as ever. To get to his friend's house where his friend's like being a total butt to him. That's true. I didn't even realize. I mean, there's literally a rainbow. I mean, that was obviously a joke. There's no way there was just ah, a rainbow there. And if there was, like the ironic symbolism of it's pretty good. Yes. Yeah. I thought that That's was an good. amazing way to start the movie. Because he's literally walking to his doom. Like he's so happy. <laughs> and it shows like how his character is so 
just like up in the clouds. You know what I mean? He's just doing whatever, going with the flow, like very naive. And... Yeah, it's how he's naive, and he's he's the happiest man ever just because he's happy, not mm-hmm. because of anything else. That's Which true. I think is really sweet. I really, really liked his character because of that. So I thought it was cool. The first shot is like stunning. Even like just the cinematography throughout the movie. Yes. The really fields good. were beautiful. The fields were gorgeous. I was like, does it actually look like that? Mm-hmm. I thought it was so cool. I didn't know Inishirin wasn't a real island. As far as I know, it's not. So you don't even know? I'm He's pretty just sure. He's facts about how cool it is that it's not real and you don't even know. I'm pretty positive. You're correct. I'm like 86% positive. 86% <laughs> positive. <laughs> Well, when you're getting a COVID test, being positive is not a good thing. Well, be positive. That's my blood type. So you're basically saying you're just like Podrick. It's in your blood yes. to be positive. Yeah. That's cute. There's something I wanted to comment on, which was like, what the heck? Like, what even? They literally go to the pub at 2 o'clock in the afternoon every day. Like, do they not have jobs? Yeah, I agree with you. That was I, thought, weird, I guess, though. was it supposed to be a joke? Or were they, is that really like a, is that just like a normal time? culturally when people go get drinks like in the afternoon it probably so I'm not is trying to offend any irish people i just don't know but i was amazed by it that I they think, do that yeah i think it probably is like a cultural thing but it was weird that you don't see them do anything else other than walk pet some cows and go to the pub yeah they don't do any jobs like his friend who was like such a booty hole column <laughs> Colum like spends his whole day playing his fiddle, but somehow has a bunch of money to buy beer every afternoon. Like, yeah, where, where do they does get, he get, where the, do they money? get the money? And is then, it just free? Yeah, and then Colum is just like walking around with cows all the time. How does he make money? <laughs> where are they getting their money from? And his sister has to leave for a job, so obviously she needs money. What job does she have there? She didn't even have one. Did she, she didn't do anything. I don't think. She thinks she just took care of the home, she uh, took care of the house, and she fed Colum and everything. I think that's what it was. Podrick. Podrick. I'm sorry. I got them confused. It took me a long time to figure out Podrick's name. They don't say it very early on in the movie. Yeah, they really don't. And then uh, the only reason I picked up on it was because it was like on the subtitles the whole time. Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah, it's it's just on the subtitles. 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 I keep seeing tit. (laughs) Subtitles. I don't like that word. I don't like the word tit. I think it's a gross word. That's, yeah, that's true. I think it's a gross word. Imagine if your best friend came to you and told you to your face that they don't like you. (laughs) Like, I I first was like, I thought, because, you know, the, the movie was kind of like making a joke out of it and like just playing fun out of it. But the fact that like, it really was his best friend came up to him and said he doesn't like him. And then I sat there and I was like, if my best friend came up to me and said that, I would be so upset. Like, I, I can understand. like Because in the movie, everybody's treating him like he's crazy because he's continually like can't get over it. But I wouldn't be able to get over it. Now, I probably wouldn't go pestering her all the time because when I find out someone yeah. like, doesn't like me, then I feel really bad and I don't want to be around them and make them dislike me more. But I just can't even imagine. If my friend said that to me, I would be so upset. I would be in the same boat. Like and Jonathan, it- he just asked, like, we're getting married in September and he just asked his best friend to be his best man. Imagine uh, yeah. if you had asked him and he went, you know, I don't like you anymore. I, I think you're dull. Don't, yeah, I think you're dull. That would be brutal. Like, I, I wouldn't even know, like, how to respond to that. Haven't you had girls break up with you because they said you were boring? Yes. <laughs> because I feel like someone would say that first off. Like, how did they say it? What did they say? Oh, God. What, I don't even know what they said. Or you're not, like, charming enough or you're just not, like, exciting. Oh, my God. That's terrible. I cannot believe that. <laughs> you're so not exciting. I am the most exciting person in the world. <laughs> I can't even I can't even believe that somebody would say that to you. Like it blows my mind <laughs> that someone will break up with you because you're boring. But can you potentially relate to the movie because it's considered a non-romantic breakup and he was telling his friend that he's boring. How does that make you feel? You've been through this experience. I guess that's true, but that wasn't a romantic breakup. I know. What, you mean your breakup or the no, movie? No, no, the movie. Yeah, but it's still a breakup it because still someone is. thought their friend was boring. That's true. Come on, give us your opinion. Tell us your okay. experience. How'd you get past it? Give Podrick some advice. Just stop caring. You just didn't care. <laughs> so you must have liked the girl very much then. Yeah, maybe not. There was one time in like fifth grade where I had this friend and I just thought he was just, he just got kind of annoying. And I think I told him, I was like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. But you were in fifth grade. I know. It's not like you were like a grown, like 55, 60 year old man. That's true. I, I still feel bad about that. But yeah, I was just like, I, I don't want to be You literally can really relate to this movie. 
I someone's even, done it to you and you've done it to someone else i didn't even think about that until That's right crazy. now see i can't believe you did that you were such a mean kid you know i was probably a mean kid too i was kind of mean in like middle school late elementary yeah i remember once i told somebody that i don't ever really remember getting bullied growing up i don't really think i was or if i was i didn't realize that i was being bullied and I told that to somebody once, and then they told me, they were like, well, maybe you were the bully. And I was like, oh, my God. Like, that is so mean. Jesus. It really hurt my feelings because it's like, I didn't even have any friends. Like, who was I there to bully? I don't know. I felt so bad. I was like, you made me so upset for me. I was like, oh, my God, was I a bully? And I don't remember. I don't know. What, what, I don't know if I was a bully or not. Oh. I don't think I was because I didn't really talk to people. I doubt and it. the friends I did have, like we were good friends, and I wasn't friends with like popular people. Like, usually, probably, popular people are known for being bullies. You were probably just intimidating. Does that count as bullying? No. Yeah, I can't believe you've been through that experience. You, I, and I'm surprised you don't have more talking points on this movie. I know. I didn't even think about that until you said that. I don't know. I thought you were really gonna resonate <laughs> with it. You didn't think about the two experiences where it happened to you? Not at all. Well, that's nah, it's just me. You know. My wish. It's all about the movie, the art. It's all about the art, the craft. But isn't the art and the craft, like, the whole point of art is, like, you can relate to it relate to and it, find yes. meaning in it yes, for because sure. of personal experience. Like, that is what makes movies so touching. Like, that's what makes movies make you cry because you can you can connect to it. Mm -hmm. And you literally have connections and you're not making them. Yeah, no, it, I guess it just didn't hit me in that way as it has, in, like, in other movies. <laughs> I just hit Jonathan for anybody who would be listening to this, if you would, if anybody does. It's domestic abuse. No, it's not. I'm I didn't actually twice. hit him. Go watch the video. It's on camera. <laughs> I didn't hit him. <laughs> um, I feel like this movie's very similar to his other movies, for sure, because it's, like, darkly hilarious at times. It was not darkly hilarious. I just thought it was really funny. It's really funny, and then also just, like, incredibly sad, too. Yeah. I mean, it was incredibly sad, but it was it wasn't. I wouldn't even say it was incredibly sad. I would say it was just more like disappointing. Just melancholy. Time. I wasn't disappointed in the movie, but I was just disappointed in the character's action. Does that make sense? That makes sense. Like I felt like first off, the humor going off what you said. Like the jokes were genius in this movie. Like somebody really thought it out. And what was funny about the jokes is they were simple. Mm -hmm. They weren't complicated. It was just like a funny like side comment that was hilarious like every like, time it was so funny it's like um you used to be nice and now do you know what you are not nice not nice <laughs> i know but that was a character theme for him that he did he wasn't like a thesaurus of a man he mm -hmm. would just say like he would add i don't know what you would call it but you know the words that like emphasize a word not nice yes very nice very great i forget like, the english like, like vocab word that I, means oh, that. I hate English. English was my least favorite subject in school. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I hated proofreading okay. my papers. Hey, what do you mean? <laughs> I speak pretty good English. Jonathan, he knows a lot of big words, like big smart words. Big word man. Did you like English? What was your favorite subject in school? It was usually social studies, and I didn't love English, but I was good at it. Mm. Well, you can speak it fluently, so that's pretty impressive. <laughs> yeah, I can. Love it. Yeah, it's pretty rare. <laughs> you are rare, Jonathan. What a rare man. Sorry, did I interrupt your talking points? No, I was going to come up with an. I was coming on another okay. one. Okay, I wanted to talk about the paradox of their friendship and their weird breakup because it was like, it was unusual. Like, it didn't make sense. Like, first off, like, Podrick seems so sweet, you know? Like, he seems like such a nice guy. So, like, I don't understand why Colm didn't want to be his friend. Like, why couldn't he just not talk to him all day? Why couldn't he spend, like, the morning to two working on his music and then hang out with Colm? Or not Colm, Podrick. Yeah. I don't know why. I feel like you just, like, had enough of, like, his... Of his, all of him? His boringness. His boringness. <laughs> Jonathan, I have had enough of your boringness. Well, I hate to... I'm going to start cutting off my fingers. That would make things difficult, especially the wedding. True. I just won't cut off my ring finger. Where are you going to put the ring? Well, who said I was going to marry you if I would cut off my fingers to get away from you? <clears throat> I guess that's true. Mm -hmm. People have done worse. People have done worse. So I first off thought it was really sad. And then I was thinking like halfway through the movie, like why is Podrick obsessed with him? Like what does he, why can he not get over him? You know what I mean? And, and then I thought it was interesting that the tables turned and it was almost like Colm was obsessed with Podrick. He's mm -hmm. like, 
I'm oh. going to cut off my fingers because I hate you so much. But when I cut off my fingers, I can't play music, which is the one reason I want you to leave me alone. Uh, yeah. like, it didn't make any sense. <laughs> like I didn't understand how he thought he was gaining any ground. And it was, I mean, this gets, I have all this, this weird wrapped up metaphors and things about why they were acting the way that they were. But I just, I thought it was ridiculous. Like, what did he think that he was going to achieve by cutting off his fingers? Yeah, it, it was just pointless. I read a thing that said, that like had this theory about the movie that this is just like about the Irish Civil War. And it's just like... People fighting people <clears throat> for no reason. Senselessness, violence. See, I don't know anything about the Irish War, so I can't <clears throat> say anything as to like if <clears throat> it was senseless violence. But it sounds like that person thinks that it was. Yeah. <laughs> I know, and then one thing that I thought was paradoxical, and maybe I'm using the word paradox in the wrong instance, was the fact that that Colm thought he was so smart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He thought he was a gene. He thought he was so smart, but he was doing the stupidest thing ever. Yes, like, cutting like off childish. His fingers. Yeah, and then Podrick doesn't think of himself as a smart man, and he would say the why. He said like the wisest thing that one night, you know, when he was drunk, and he was telling him like, it means more to be nice. And have that impact on the world, then somebody remember your music. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Which I thought was, I thought it was really interesting. That's a good point. I didn't yeah. pick up on that. And then one like slightly tiny theory that I have that I don't think is true, but I thought it for like one second, but it just doesn't feel right. Is they were talking the whole movie about how like all of the women are in love with Colum. What if Podrick is gay and he's in love with Colum? Huh. I didn't even consider that. And that's why he was that. so upset about the friendship breakup. Oh. Just a thought for your thoughts. Yeah, that's or a good honestly, thought. Honestly, maybe just everybody in the town was obsessed with Colin. Maybe. Because he was just so smoking hot. I know. Brendan Gleeson, my, my. <laughs> my, my. I don't know what he looked like when he was young. He's got the biggest ears I've ever seen. <laughs> His ears are so big. Also ironic that we watched Edge of Tomorrow the day before we watched this. And it had him, too. What was he in Edge of Tomorrow? He was the general. The colonel. Oh my goodness. You know? <laughs> I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, we watched Edge of Tomorrow on the plane home from Christmas. Wow, that is crazy. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I thought that was an interesting just kind of paradox of how their friendships made no sense. And I think he did that with every character. That uh Martin. 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 Yes, Martin, Martin. Mc <laughs> McDonough. Martin McDonough. He did that with every character, which I, I wonder why he did it, like if it was just a joke. Every single character had the most contradicting personality. Like, it wasn't like it was one person. It was everybody in the town. It was everybody, yeah. Yeah, it was so weird. Like, the sister is this, like, introvert who just wants to read all the time. Siobhan. I also love the name Siobhan. That was Siobhan. Really good time. They were calling her Siobhan. Siobhan. With a V? With a V. That's how oh, it's pronounced. I, I thought think. it was, like, with a B. Whoopsie. Siobhan. Whoopsie Siobhan. daisies. Well, in Spain, a V is a B sound. Well, not everybody gets to go to Spain. Experience. I'm not saying that because <laughs> I've been there. I'm saying that pe other people would know that too, especially people who speak Spanish. Oh, there you go. The V is a B, so it could be Siobhan. She just could be Spanish. I don't know. I thought her. I thought it was interesting how contradictory it was. And then you know, like Padraig is supposedly this like idiot who has nothing in his brain, but sometimes says really wise things. And the same thing with his friend Dominic. Dominic, yeah. Dominic was so ridiculous and then randomly he would say something and everybody like what like, like what? He, he, he was like when he said touche and everybody was like what does that mean and he was like it's french <laughs> it's french you don't I know. know this he would say like really wise things sometimes so i thought that was awesome and i also liked how i feel bad because like our talking points are just literally all over the place <laughs> but I, I thought it was interesting how the just like the breaking up of their relationship and like that for some reason, Colm being mean to Podrick all of a sudden made Podrick a mean person. Mm -hmm. Like he became a bad person he so that he could try to be friends with Colm. Because of just like his obsession and he drove his, obsession, his yeah. sister away and Dominic away. Yeah, he drove them both away. It was really sad just to be with someone who didn't want to be with him. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like can be related to romantic relationships. You know, yeah, I, I've that's seen true. it before. People who are in bad relationships and with people who don't want to be with them will push the people that are closest to them away because they have that obsession with that person. It's mm -hmm. honestly so true. Oh, I didn't think about that. What but was so, I going to wait, say? There was really nothing that, about him cutting off his fingers that had any reason. Maybe I read one thing that was like, he's putting so much pressure on himself to be this like great musician 
that cutting his fingers off was a way to escape like that pressure. So he was freeing himself self subconsciously. Yes. And also, like, why wasn't it painful? Oh, I bet it was painful. <laughs> but he kept he tried to play music. He was playing his violin without his index finger, oh, and then he was out there like conducting them with his violin i didn't understand it yeah i don't know i couldn't wrap my brain around it like i couldn't think of any way that it would make sense and not be ridiculous mm -hmm. that would be super painful that would be oh. ridiculously painful i mean how, he cut off all of his fingers like and also how did he not get an infection and die? that's also a good point he didn't wrap him up he didn't wrap him up and how did he get out of the burning house another that question is another mine. good question maybe burning um, question burning question <laughs> maybe after you find him like sitting on the beach maybe he's just dead and that's calm or that's Podrick just envisioning him there i don't believe that no i mean i don't believe it either i but don't like that, that could theory, be a theory at all i think it's a bad theory well, i think my theory of him input. being gay makes more sense <laughs> also something i thought was crazy crazy was that his sister shaban would rather live in a war zone than on an Ishirin. Because true. the war between Podrick and Colum was worse, was worse to than her the actual Irish than going war. to an actual war. Which I thought was interesting. Yeah, I love the parallels of just them walking in the fields and they hear like a gunshot and a cannon. And then... I know because it's <clears throat> so distant. Mm -hmm. And it's honestly like a good metaphor to life in general. Like there's there can be so many terrible things happening in the world. And all you can care about is something small happening some in your life. Some small situation that yeah. is and, inconveniencing you. Yeah. Game. And this terrible thing that's happening, you just notice it every once in a while. And you're like, oh, there it is. And then you move on. You don't care. Yeah. That's an interesting parallel to like real life. That's a great point. Cool. Oh, thank you. Do you want to get into metaphors and symbolism? Because I have a lot of them. Let's go for it. For sure. One thing that I thought, and I wonder if you thought this already or saw it online. Because I'm just so smart, obviously. Everybody else probably Your like intelligence. Too. Or nobody else thought of it because I'm a genius. I thought that Colum was the dog. The dog represented him and his personality. You know, wise and smart, but sometimes too smart for his own good. Podrick was Jenny, Jenny. who just oh. wanted companionship, just wanted to be there, just wanted to be close to you, and didn't need much. That's really cool, actually. I didn't even think didn't about think of that. that? No. Yes, score. I'm a genius. <laughs> That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. I was thinking about it. I was like, that's totally what they are. And then the donkey dies from choking on his finger. Mm -hmm. Because this is this terrible like situation that they're going through and his obsession with the guy and the guy cutting off his finger like basically destroys him. It destroys him. And it yeah. does destroy him. He's he's just like lost. And... Yeah, and I think the death of the donkey donkey. The death of the donkey Donkey. symbolizes the death of his innocence. His and... innocence, yeah. And his niceness. Mm -hmm. And I want I want to say niceness because that's what he said. That's true. That's all he cared about was niceness. He didn't care about you know innocence and I don't know other big fancy thesaurus words. <laughs> yeah, I, that was the big metaphor that I came out of it with, and I'm very proud of myself that I blew your mind with it. Yeah, because right after Jenny dies, he tells him that he's going to burn his house down, and then he does. Yeah, it was like it was like the death of it. Mm -hmm. like, uh, all that was holding him together was Jenny. That was so sad, though. I love Jenny. When Jenny died, it was really sad. She says, "That was so cute." Jenny is inside when I'm sad, or he said something like that. What do you mean? When his oh, sister, to his walked sister? In. yeah, yeah. You can't don't make her go outside when I'm sad. When or I'm sad, it's yeah. So sweet. It was so sweet how much he loved Jenny and how much he just loved all animals in general. Emotional like, support donkey. Yeah, and only even one. though like Colin was being terrible to him, like he still. But take care of like his dog like he still wanted to take care of it also that, like, like thoughtful wise side the flip side of that when the policeman beats up um podrick calm still like puts him on the wagon and takes care of him yeah he does because mm -hmm. he still cares about him just doesn't want to talk to him she doesn't want to talk to him yeah because <laughs> you're boring because you're boring you're dull yeah. Well, he's always been dull. What's, what's changed? <laughs> <laughs> you were so good at remembering the quotes. That that was a good quote, though. I like that. That was really funny. She was great in that movie, The Girl. Mm-hmm. Carrie, yeah. Carrie Condon. I apologize if I'm mispronouncing her last name. Mispronouncing things. What is that called in the grocery store? You know those vines? Oh, the guys yeah. like mispronouncing things. In Corkly. In Corkly. <laughs> Resistance puffs. Resistance puffs. <laughs> it's always the one I remember. Oh, I love those videos. Whoever that guy who came up with that, he's a genius. Genius, man. Okay, another symbolism that I thought of when I was watching the movie. I had a lot of talking points of this movie. Yeah, There's did. way more symbolism in this than the lighthouse because the lighthouse was so abstract 
that you can't grasp on the symbolism, but, but I'm, you know, yeah. if you give me like kindergarten level symbolism, I'll find it. And Jonathan will look right through it, I guess. He only gets that high level. Knowledge it's the stuff. high level shit. Yes. <laughs> what I was going to say was, I thought it was really interesting how in the church scene, all of the women were wearing black shawls, except for Siobhan. Siobhan, Siobhan had on this bright red colorful one. Uh... And I thought it was, I thought it symbolized that they were the black sheep in the community. They stood out. People thought they were weird. There was something off about them. I didn't even notice that either. I really liked that. That's good. Yeah, because she wasn't like conforming to everything. She was just wearing her crazy scarf. Mm -hmm. It made her stand out. So it's, I think it symbolized that they're the black sheep of the community. Which makes sense. And then Dominic's right there with them. Dominic was great, though. Yeah. Well, that's one dream gone. I know. That was such a sweet line. Such a sad line. It was a really sweet line. Because, um, like, in the beginning, you just, like, oh, this guy's, like, really gross, and he's just, like, it's very insulting and loud, but he has these, like, quiet little moments, like you said, where you're just, like, oh, It's such a wise thing to say, or such a sweet thing to say, and it, like, reminds you that, you know, even though he seems like this weird wacko, like, he, he's got, like, great intentions, and he's a nice person. I mean, I really liked the way they developed his character. Mm -hmm. Minus the part where he dies. Yeah. That was really sad. Yeah, Martin, um... McDonough is expert at crafting hilarious moments with sad drama. He's so good at mixing those two. Stir the pot. Stir the pot. Okay, this is something I wanted to mention. I thought it was a good full circle moment when at the beginning she asks him, do you ever feel lonely? And then at the end, he's like just covered in like showered in loneliness. You know uh, what I mean? Because yeah. at first he was like, are you ridiculous? Why would I feel lonely? I would never feel I lonely. I feel lonely. And then, like, he ends up pushing everybody away, and all of a sudden, he's, he's drowning in loneliness. Yeah. That was in, he didn't know what it was to feel lonely until it hit him like a freight train. Oh. Also, I like the symbolism of um, Padre when he first confronts Calm about it, and one of them goes outside, and you see them sitting each at their, like, respective tables with, like, the wall between them. That was good symbolism. Wait, I don't remember what you're talking about. What happened? At the bar, the first time. The first time in the bar. Oh, I didn't notice that. That they built a wall between them. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's genius. I didn't even notice that. That's crazy. I thought that this was interesting. How Colum, even though he thinks he's so smart, and he, sorry, I'm just like spewing all the metaphors and talking points that I This is what I, I did last time. Emmy. Yeah, I guess you did this with the lighthouse. I'm spewing with this one. I thought it was interesting how Colum, you know, he thinks he's so smart. He thinks he's got everything figured out about life and what matters in life. And he says all that matters is like remembering like and being remembered by people, right? Mm -hmm. And but he doesn't consider like how he is remembered. Do you know what I mean? Yes, it's and only the fact that he was remembered. Some Plenty would of know people his are name. remembered for terrible things. <laughs> yeah, so it would be better to be remembered for terrible things rather than not. But then it was so sweet when Colin was like, "Well, my sister is amazing, and I will always remember her for that." You mm, know, Podrick, yeah. Like mm -hmm. he'll remember her forever and ever and ever for being nice, and like that means more, right? And then literally Colum sits there and I love how Siobhan called him out for it. And Colum's like, well, everybody remembers like Mozart from the whatever century. And then she, she calls him out for saying the wrong century. Yeah. And I was like, does it, it's, he can't, even, he can't remember even remember it. And he's saying that it's so significant that you remember it. I thought it was genius. And it's such like an inspiration to him. And he just doesn't even remember that. That's a good point. I know. Did I preheat the oven? I have no idea. I'm going to go preheat the oven. Hold my tiny microphone. The fact that at the very end of the movie, Podrick actually says fuck instead of feck. He did? Mm hmm. That's the one time he says fuck and not Wait, the feck in his did, normal Irish accent. Do they say fuck in Ireland? Did oh, he yeah, say that feck? Too. Well, I think. Or is that just like the nice way of saying it? I don't I think it's just like their accent. Like we say frick. But it's like he almost, every time he says feck, he's not meaning it as much. And then at the very end, he finally says like I the normal way to say the word. It. Yeah. Wow. Whoa, that's mind blowing. So he finally breaks. What else did you have to um, say? Oh, um. Oh, yeah. I thought it was really sad how Dominic finds this hook at the beginning of the movie and he's so excited about it. And stick he's with using a hook on it. it. That's what he finds at the beginning of the movie. Oh, and then at the end of the movie, it's what they that. use to find him. That's good. Isn't good. that really sad? That's sad. I was really confused by like what that old lady was. Like, so, I feel like there's some symbolism to her, but I don't know what it was. A banshee in, like, Irish folklore is, like, a witch that represents death. And I think that's what that woman represents. They said there's no banshees on in a Sheeran, though, in the movie. That's true. I don't really know how that ties into it. I didn't know a banshee was supposed to be, like, a witch. 
Mm-hmm. And they like shriek and like howl. That's called like a banshee. But she's like best friends with Shabon. Kind of. But she knew people were going to die. She knew two people were going to die. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Like one person definitely. Maybe two. So would it have been dependent on if Shabon had said she would date him? Dominic? I think so, yeah. This will be nominated for Best Picture. And How do you know that? Screenplay. How do you know that? I'm are you 90, make, are you betting on it right now? Ninety five percent confident. And that's more than eighty six. Yes. <laughs> Much more. <laughs> so best original screenplay and picture. I thought the screenplay was so good. And Carl and Farrell should get nominated, I think, too. Yeah? Or Carrie Condon. The woman? Yeah. Siobhan. They were both good. I wonder if they will. When do they release the nominations? Oh boy. I think it's like January 22nd. Jan 22nd. That's mm-hmm. very soon, actually. Yeah. Once they release them, we can watch them and do them for this. Or, yeah. I mean, we might have already done one of them right now. That's true. Banshees of Ed Sheeran. Ed Sheeran. That just like, really like rolls off the tongue more. I'm not an Ed Sheeran fan. I don't dislike him. I just don't listen to his music. Yeah, not a huge fan. Well, I do have fun facts. Do you want to talk about fun facts? Oh, yes. So. I have, let me count them, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight fun facts for you today, Mr. Mister. Good Lord. Mm -hmm. Fun fact number one, what is the national symbol of Ireland? It's like, it's not a clover, right? Like a three-leaf clover. That's what everybody thinks it is, right? It's a leprechaun. (laughs) (laughs) It's a leprechaun? Oh, no. That's so (laughs) ridiculous. (laughs) Why didn't you say it? You're like, you know, everybody <clears throat> thinks it's a three leaf clover, but it's actually, it's a leprechaun. <laughs> oh, did I say I bought this sweater? And no, I didn't. I didn't buy the sweater in Ireland. No, Dang you it! Didn't. I always think I bought this sweater in just Ireland. It's just green. because it's green. Just because it's green. I bought another sweater in Ireland. Well, everybody just, you know, I had the intentions of wearing my Irish sweater, but I didn't. I bought this somewhere else. Great job. I'm so stupid. Sweat it off. I literally wore it intentionally because I thought I bought it in Ireland, but I didn't. <laughs> I'm an embarrassment to the family. What is the symbol? The national symbol is a harp. See? It's on the Guinness. It's like their logo. Oh. A harp. You need to put that together. Mm-hmm. It's a very smooth beer, though. If this was a beer review podcast, what would you say about it? I would say it's kind of got like an oaky afterbirth. <laughs> <laughs> That's what he says about every alcohol he drinks. Any of you Office fans out there? Because it's hilarious. I it's love pretty this symbol. Good. I'm not a huge fan of stouts. It's super cute. But it's good. This is the only stout that I've ever had. A drought stout. But I will say, one, I was talking to Jonathan about this earlier. There's like a West Indies one or something, I don't know what it's called. But they make a Guinness that tastes just like toffee. And it is to die for. It's so good. Sounds really good. And Jonathan really is a huge toffee fan. So I think I'm going to order it online. And maybe we can drink it next week. Order it now. Maybe come back. Come in time for New Year's. Oh, it says what the widget is on the can. That we were talking about earlier. It says what? The widget is what's on the inside. No, wait, I'll read it to you. Upon, wait, no. Upon opening, the famous round plastic widget in every can unleashes nitrogen through the beer, creating the creamy head and iconic surge that distinctively that's distinctively Guinness. I told you it makes it creamy and fluffy. To best enjoy, open the can and wait a moment for the nitrogen to release. I did not do that. Good job. Good thing we have two more cans. Pour into a glass tilted at 45 degrees angel angle. I can't speak Angels. 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 <laughs> At, a, at 45 degrees and watch the surge and settle and then enjoy. Watch the surge. There's something I like about stouts, though, is they're very creamy and they're, like, fluffy on the top. I love the foam. The foam is the best part of a beer. Sometimes it's – I like, like, a smooth foam. Like, Guinness has, like, a smooth foam. Sometimes the foams are almost bubbly, and I don't like that. You don't like the bubbly? Yeah. Like Any latte it. drinkers out there know what I'm talking about, too. Sometimes the foam is very stiff and what's more like a bubble than it is, like, a fizz. Does that make sense? Jonathan doesn't drink coffee, so he doesn't know what I'm talking about. No, I'm not educated in yeah. this subject. Jonathan's very uneducated. But, yeah, um, national symbol of Ireland, the leprechaun. <clears throat> Got it. It's a, it's the harp. Yeah, okay. leprechaun. Okay. Sure. That was so funny. <laughs> okay, what actor agreed to do the movie before reading the script? Colin Farrell. Barry Keegan. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. I know. I thought huh. it was interesting. He was so excited to do it that he just was like, yes, I'll do it. What rule did the director, Martin McDonough, is that how you say it? Donna? Donna? What, what did you write down? Let me see. Well, you can't read it. You'll, he's trying to read my trivia answers. Oh, uh, I think it's McDonough. I could be wrong. McDonough. That sounds right. What rule did the director, Martin McDonough, give the composer, Carter 
for a while. Oh, he's a good composer. He did his other movies, which makes sense. Yeah. He gave him one rule. What was it? No loud music? I don't know. <laughs> the answer is no traditional Irish music. So even the song, like the violin songs that they play? The first song was not Irish. Can you guess what country it was um, the style of or originated from? Can you give me a hint? Like Europe? It's still, um, I think it's Europe. What continent is it in? Europe, I think. It's Europe. How confident are you in are that? Are people from Russia considered Asian? I guess that's a good question. Technically, they would be. But also, if you're from the Ukraine, then you wouldn't say you're Asian. You'd say you're European? Yeah. Well, it's I mean, in Europe. I know it's in Europe. I was just curious because you asked me what continent. I'm like, are people from Russia Asian? Fun fact, you're American when you're... Before you go to the bathroom, what are you in the bathroom? European. European. <laughs> I'm here all week. No, you live here. You're here all the time. Okay, what's your answer? <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> wait i didn't give you a question <laughs> i didn't give you a question to, um oh wait yeah you're supposed to tell oh. me what country was that opening song from oh boy what style um, i guess netherlands bulgarian hmm. is that interesting i think it was bulgarian from bulgaria <laughs> that place where is bulgarian bulgari <laughs> <laughs> bulgar where is Bulgarian? Bulgaria? From? Is that a country? Am I tripping out right now? <laughs> I'm really tripping. You gotta look this I up. gotta Google it. I'm fact check. Because I'm like sitting here, like, you know, Hungarian is. Hungary. Hungary. Bulgarian is not Bulgari. <laughs> Bulgarian. Bulgaria. It's a country, right? It's a South Slavic language. Okay. So it's not Bulgaria a country. Bulgaria is officially the Republic of Bulgaria, is a country in Southeast Europe. So it is Bulgaria. Okay. Makes sense. I feel really stupid. I don't know it either. What was your answer? My answer was... I'm just the, kidding. Oh. <laughs> okay. True or false? All of the false. main actors... Sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> all of the main actors are actually from Ireland. Oh, absolutely true. Yes. Yes. Barry Keegan was Irish. And I was sitting there at the beginning of the movie like, his accent sounds so weird. And the, and I thought he was American doing an accent. And then I realized, <laughs> oh my true. God, he's literally Irish. And I'm telling him his Irish accent isn't good. I was like, I'm such an idiot. <laughs> He was great, And though. I didn't know Carrie was Irish. I thought she was a really good accent coach. You know what? They probably just had to hire hire all Irish actors because it's such a hard accent. It is incredible. To, like, hard. master. I loved it, though. I love it when actors with accents act with their native accent. Robert Pattinson. He's British, but he always plays an American, you know? Mm -hmm. I, just, I don't know. That was interesting. And the way, I like, like it when he does his real accent. They do. They put so at the end of sentences and like. In like. Yes. I wonder what it means. Okay, another question. You ready? What does the O in front of an Irish name stand for? I don't know. A lot of Irish names have an O in front of them. Mister. There are only men about in Mrs. Ireland. <laughs> the O stands for descent of. So like O'Neill, the descent of Neils. Hmm. Neil descent. That's interesting. interesting. I didn't know Makes that. Sense. I thought it was just like a common thing to put on their names. What is the name of the village with the longest name in Ireland? I don't know that. You knew I wouldn't know that. <laughs> Why would you make it a question? Well, I thought you would know what the symbol of Ireland was, but you didn't. So you how wouldn't am I have supposed to that? know what you were going to know? What is it? It's Mook. Uh, I'm going to try to say it without without pausing, okay? Mook on Handra do daughter Halaya. <laughs> you try to say it. Look at it spelled out. It's so Mook long. Mook on Radu daughter Halaya. That sounded worse than when I did it. LOL. I did not look at your other clues. I just thought that was a really cool word. Like I want, I always think it's interesting when you see other languages like German, and it like the words look so long and hard, mm -hmm. and then a German person just like says it. It's just it's easy, because for me with English words are usually pretty short, so you don't have to really read the word to know what you're saying. You can kind of mm -hmm. glance at it and know what the word is, because I'm just such a good speed reader. <laughs> that we know. I literally am like the slowest reader on the earth of readers. I'll like. You want to like read one of my texts that I sent to somebody and then I hold it for like the amount of time I would need to read something yeah. and you're already going like halfway through I'm it. I'm only like halfway through it. He always has to pause for me so that I can actually like finish reading. It's kind of embarrassing. I'm a slow reader, but I'm a very slow thinker. Like I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we got that I'm cleared out of the way. I'm not smart, but I'm like the kind of person who like I, if you give me time to think about something, I can come up with a good answer. But like. A lot of times when we're in social situations and stuff and someone like makes a, a quick joke and everybody laughs, I'm like, Haha, I didn't get that. <laughs> and then I'll, I'll like be like, oh, like a couple minutes later. Makes so much sense. Yeah, I'm a very slow thinker. It's fine. Okay. 
What famous holiday originated in Ireland? St. Patrick's Day. Halloween. Wait, really? Yes, Halloween. Isn't That's that interesting? interesting. Yeah, that was cool. I was like, what? Because I always thought Halloween was an American holiday. Wait, is St. Patrick's Day Scotland? St. Patrick is known for Ireland, but he's not actually Irish. Oh, gosh. Where is St. Patrick from? I don't know. France. I think he's from England. England makes more St. Patrick's more of an English name. And then he name. was like, take, kidnapped into slavery and brought to Ireland. Did you know that? And then that's when he found God. Yeah, I just know these things. I went to Ireland. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I, I was reading about it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this is the final question. Where did they get the sweaters for the movie? Give me a hint. It's um, where they is got it, the sweaters. Is it the same sweater that Chris Evans Every wore in sweater. Knives Out? <laughs> Because that sweater is iconic. I don't remember that sweater. It's the white sweater that Chris Evans wears. I feel like I can picture it in my mind. I it's didn't the know most it was iconic. iconic sweater in I thought any it was just like a normal ever. sweater. No, oh, it was oh. thirst trap, man. What an icon. Yeah. I didn't see, it mustn't have been a thirst trap for me. <clears throat> I didn't even know it was iconic. Well, that's good news. So, are you getting thirst trapped? Do you say that? Are you thirst? Are you getting thirst trapped? <laughs> <laughs> you say like I don't think what does so. What does that even mean, thirst trap? It's like you're trapped by the thirstiness of the person. But I've never been thirsty for a person. What does that even mean? You've never been thirsty for me? Unbelievable. <laughs> I can't deal does with this. Does it just mean like that you like like them? You desire them? Yeah, I think so. Oh, I'm such an idiot. Okay, moving on. Where did they get all of the sweaters? All of them. Oh, Mall of America? <laughs> <laughs> One man knit all of them. <laughs> the co- Was he the costume designer? No, he was just a man, like an old man that knit. <laughs> And he knit all the sweaters by hand. And I was literally thinking that because I remember there was a scene when he had a sweater with like a collar on it, mm-hmm. like a red sweater with a collar. And I was like, that, did they, like, who, how would somebody even make that? And it turns out an old man knitted it. And that, he made duplicates. So there was two of every crazy. sweater. And he made all of the sweaters. That's nice. Every sweater they wore. I don't know. I thought it was like really cool. That's like some Edith Head <laughs> shit, man. I know. Yes, queen. But basically, yes, that is the summation of my question. So did it do a good job? I thought I would yes. mix in some Irish trivia with movie trivia. And I, I was going to do more movie trivia, and then I forgot. So that's all I <laughs> But that was some pretty good questions. Good I didn't amount. really stump you on some of them. Okay, so Except now, do you want to talk about what movie we're going to do next week? Yeah, what did you have I have two in, in mind. I have two in mind, okay? So one, I really think we should talk about Avatar. We should talk about I Avatar. I think we need to talk we need about to Avatar. Avatar. We need to go see Avatar. But I know Jonathan really wants to see Babylon. I but, would love to see Babylon. But, 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 <laughs> I feel like Babylon is going to get nominated for an Oscar. Abs- Avatar, Avatar will. will t- they both will. So whichever sure. one we see, we will review the other eventually. So I think we should see Avatar. It's a hot topic right now. And I want to go to the movies and see it. I haven't been to the movies in forever. True. I didn't go mo- to the movies when we went home for Christmas, which is crazy because my family goes to the movies like two to three times a week. I thought y'all must have gone. My family has like the special membership that you get to like see unlimited movies because we see so many movies. Not like movie pass. Oh, yeah, Movie Pass. But they're that's what inspired back. the Regal they're thing. coming back. Nobody's going to want it. Gonna I don't know why it. they're reviving it. But, so, um, Avatar? I think we're going to do Avatar, yeah. How does that make you feel? That sounds good. You're going to sit in the theater for three hours and 12 minutes. It's three. Is there an intermission? No, it's a movie. Oh. It's not like Gone with the Wind. Okay, we're bringing snacks. We're bringing candy, and I want a popcorn. And an empty water bottle. And an empty water. Can we go tomorrow? Tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, sure. Oh, my God, we're going to the movies tomorrow. It's decided. I think we should name this podcast Thirst Trap. <laughs> <laughs> okay, everybody. Jenny, Jenny Thirst Trap. Jenny Thirst Trap. All right. Well, that is it for the podcast today. We will see you guys next week for Avatar. Remember, if you want to, if you're even listening right now, the way of water. go check us out on Letterboxd. What? It's called Avatar, The Way of Water. <laughs> Clearly, you didn't do your research. <laughs> I just know that there is an Avatar movie, and people have been talking about it for years. I didn't even know there was going to be a sequel. And everybody, okay. everybody acted like they were expecting it. Legit, there was somebody in the movie Avatar The Way of Water who thought the movie already came out because they filmed it like three or four years ago. They thought the movie already came out. But they didn't go to flopped. any premieres or anything? No, there's like they a minor part. They flopped? thought it came out and flopped. <laughs> we should talk about this next week. We're actually talking about that podcast. That's true. <clears throat> well, it was great seeing you guys today, and thanks for listening. And check us out on Letterboxd if you want to give your opinions and do all the things. So, bye. Adios.